dear friends across the sea. May I tell you something of my home, my family, and my country? What is the most important thing to begin with? Shall I tell you of my wife, my son, and my daughter, and that they are living well and happy? That my children may play with the friends of their choosing, that they, when of age, may go to the school of their choosing, study what they want, and prepare themselves for a future filled with unlimited opportunities. That while going to school and choosing their friends, they are learning that people can live together in peace. True, they have their childish arguments, but they are soon past. Even when they play, they are learning that cooperation and understanding are essential to success. When they play their baseball or football games in one of the vacant lots around our neighborhood, they learn that one player cannot play and win alone. They must all cooperate and play together to understand each other. To have a leader is good, but he must be a leader who can play the game with those he leads. A team must be as a machine. If but one part is missing from a machine, it cannot operate successfully. If all the elements of cooperation and understanding are missing from everyday life, can it be a success? You and I, can we live together in peace? For example, my son has a bag of candy. He offers to share that candy with his friends, and another boy takes all the candy from him. My son will fight for it, and one or both of them will be hurt. Is this the right thing to do? Suppose instead that my son has offered this candy, and this same boy takes his share, and only his share. This means there will be sufficient candy for all. This is cooperation and understanding. To share and share alike is important. Here are some of the things my children learn here in America. To make a better land than ever before in which to live for themselves, their children, and all generations to come. To worship God in whatever manner they choose. To live with others as a friend and in peace. To be honest and truthful always. That they need never no fear of oppression. To respect their parents and elders. To go where they want and whenever they want. To choose their friends. To choose their future and make a success of it. What can I say of my wife? Shall I say my wife is my right hand? Shall I say she is my heart and my mind and my life? She has borne me two children. Perhaps you will say, what is that? Many wives hold such a place in life. True, but I am speaking of my wife. For a wife to hold such a place in life is her right. You see, we have a five-room apartment with two children carrying toys all over it and dragging dirt and mud from the vacant lot they were playing in. My wife has plenty to do. This is an addition to keeping the children neatly clothed and herself presentable even though she may have been ironing for the past three hours. The cooking? Oh, well, we do that together. Certainly I help with the cooking. I've even helped with the ironing at times. It's kind of handy when the wife is sick or goes away or just to help her a bit. We go to the movies about once, maybe twice a week. Then I help her with the cooking or the dishes just so we can get to the movies on time. Of course, the children go with us. Perhaps on the way home we will stop in a drugstore for a Coke or an ice cream sundae. After that, we'll go home and listen to our radio. Listen to any program we want and as long as we like. This is one of our great American privileges. We will hear all the news from all over the world. Soon it is time to go to bed. No, we didn't do anything exciting this evening, but we shared an evening together, my wife, my children, and I. I realize that in just four or five hours of one evening, I've experienced the many events that people over the world have not known for many years. Some never. I've listened to the radio and heard the program of my choosing. I heard the news as it happened from all parts of the world. I saw a movie which was not propaganda. A movie that did not preach politics, war, or scandal mongering. And I had a Coke and ice cream without a ration card or paying black market prices for it. By the way, I nearly forgot the most important event of the day. I voted in an election. I marked my X in front of the man's name whom I thought would be best for the job. No one told me who to vote for, and I had many names from which to choose the man who will work for me, a taxpayer, for the next two or four years. This, too, is one of our many priceless privileges here in America. You ask who I am and what I do. Well, I'm a working man earning a fair salary, and I work for the United States government. I'm a correctional officer at a federal prison. 
Sounds grim and terrible, doesn't it? Let me explain. We have men from all walks of life, young and old, rich and poor, all who have committed some crime against their neighbors, against society. True, they are being punished by being in prison, but at the same time they are being taught the ways of a better, more constructive life to be used when they are released from prison. They go to school and can even receive a college diploma through the prison school. They are taught trades such as mechanics, refrigeration, watch repair, plumbing, and a dozen others upon which to build a new life when they are again free men. We have had many visitors from many foreign lands, perhaps even from your country. These people are learning the new methods of reconstructing the lives of men who, for some reason, have strayed from the path of right. They are coming here to learn those things which will help to make their homeland a better place to live for their children and yours. Remember, these teachings come from America, and they are trying to better the lives of you and those around you. I am interested in my work and try to learn more about it every day, and try in some way to better it if I can. This, too, is my privilege as an American to criticize and improve whenever and wherever I can. Some things I say you may find hard to believe. Living here in America, we take them for granted, perhaps too much so. Somehow we have managed to protect all our rights and privileges through all the years of war and peace. At times they seem to be lost, but they always reappear. Perhaps this is because no matter what the situation may be, there are those who keep striving for the eternal existence of our democracy that no matter what the personal sacrifice may be, the average American will not let his country down, nor can his eternal thirst for liberty and justice be quenched. All Americans, wherever they may be, observe Thanksgiving Day. They will give thanks not only for the food given them or for the bountiful lives bestowed upon them, but they will give thanks to God that the nation upon which the world looks and depends on for freedom is their home, America. It is my sincere hope and wish that all people can and will live as well and as free as we here in America. Cooperation and complete understanding can and will provide that. Perhaps world peace can best be attained in the same way. Let the people of the world work together to attain a lasting peace. A peace written not in the blood of the men who had to win it on the battlefields of the world or on the paper of the conference halls, but a peace which is burned into the hearts of all who make the peace and the peoples of the world to the end that we shall have a lasting peace for all times to come. So help us God, your American friend, Franklin Gogler.